Okay, so it's time. Uh, in this video, we are going to install Arch Linux from scratch. Uh, this has probably been one of my most requested videos ever. I get it a couple times a week, um, so I think it's about time to do it. In fact, I should say this is like your tax dollars at work. Uh, I actually put this up as a Patreon incentive. One of my first, I think it was like 150 bucks a month, and we do an Arch Linux install. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is that coming to fruition. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time with this just because. I think there are a lot of videos out there already on Arch Linux installation, um, but they're sort of geared to people who are already ready to install Arch Linux in the sense that I think um, I, in this video I want to take a little bit more time, explain a little bit more about what's going on, uh, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. And this is going to be one, I might actually have to break this up into, into multiple videos, but there are going to be two main parts. And that is one is going to be the actual install, and the other is going to be uh, configuration of Arch Linux. And that incidentally was another Patreon incentive that was, both of them were met in the past uh, month. So that's good. Uh, support me on Patreon. Um, so anyway, the requirements for this, all you need is an internet connection. So I'll go ahead and say that ethernet is preferred. Uh, you're going to want to have a USB drive or uh, a CD drive or something else like that. Um, and you should also have some knowledge of Linux. Um, I am going to be installing this well, I'm gonna be formatting the USB drive on a Linux machine already. Uh, it's easier if you're already on a Linux machine or an OS X machine. And of course, if you're moving into Arch Linux, it's probably best if you have some knowledge of Linux already. Um, so that's just to be totally clear because I, I think the, pro the install process is not too difficult. Um, you know, I'll try and make it as easy as possible, as comprehensible as possible. Um, and I'll even talk about maintaining an Arch Linux system. Um, but uh, I'll just say that you probably should, I mean, you maybe not want to like jump into this directly from Windows. You might want to play around with a, a Linux machine before that. Um, so anyway, that's all you need. And the end result is going to be, first off, you're going to learn a whole lot about well, of course, you're going to install Arch Linux. You're going to understand a whole lot of the basic Unix commands and stuff you need. Uh, so that comes for free. You're, of course, going to have a computer with Arch Linux on it, on it uh, and nothing else um, in the sense that... So as I said, in this video, I'm just going to install it, and you're going to be able to boot into a computer with Arch Linux. And, of course, if you don't know what that looks like, it's going to just be like a blank screen, a blank command prompt. Um, so again, in the next video after this, or, or next part, uh, I'm going to talk about how do you actually go from there, because that, that's one of the things that people have a lot of trouble with, because there are a lot of different choices you can make. But anyway, so in this video, we're just going to do the basic install. Um, okay, so uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is, of course, go to the Arch Linux website. Um, so here it is, it's just archlinux.org. Um, and as you may be able to guess, you will want to go to the download choice, um, and you're going to want to download an Arch Linux ISO. So you can get it either with Torrent, or you can go down to one of their many, many mirrors that they have in different countries to download it. Uh, I forget how big it is. It's probably, I don't know, a couple hundred megs, so it might take a little bit. Um, but once you do that, that's all you're going to need. Um, now, again, as I said, you're going to need an internet ca connection throughout the entire install, just because we're going to be installing packages not necessarily from the USB drive itself, um, but uh, you know, or from the ISO itself, uh, but we're going to be downloading them from the internet. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is, um, so once you've downloaded that, which again, might take some time, uh, let's see, where is, uh, so mine, I think, it, yeah, it's in the download folder here, so we have our Arch Linux ISO. Um, so in order to, so you're going to want to plug in your USB drive. Uh, and I should say, if you don't know on Linux, if you want to look at all the devices you have plugged in, uh, just go to the terminal and type lsblk, list all your block devices or whatever it is. Um, I haven't plugged it in yet. Now notice that there's this one device here, SDA. Now if you don't already know, I'll explain it, uh, but all of your different hard drives are given SD and then a letter or something like that. So SDA, here is my hard drive. This here, SR0, that is my CD drive. Now if you have multiple hard drives, you're going to have SDA, SDB, SDC, etc, etc. So my hard drive here has four different partitions. Again, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but um, uh, now once I plug this thing in, once I plug my USB drive in, if I put this in and I wait a second, 
uh, you will see that uh, another, we have SDA and now we have SDB. So SDB, it is now given this USB drive the label. Well, it's not really a label, but it's called it US or SDB. So that's the important thing you need to know. And you need to make absolutely sure of this for the next part, because uh, taking the ISO and putting it on the USB drive is super easy, but you just want to make absolutely sure that you're dealing with the right device. Now, let me shoot, let me pull that up again. Okay, so here's what you're going to want to do. First, you want to become root. So I'm going to put in my password. Um, and the command we're going to want to use is what's called DD. Uh, so if you look, if you type in man DD, um, here is DD stands, I think it stands for disk dump. Uh, some people call it disk destroyer because it's a very useful command, but you have to be careful how you use it, um, as I sort of alluded to before. So I'm going to quit this. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Now we want to take the ISO file and put it on the USB drive that we just, uh, or yeah, the ISO file we just downloaded and put it on the USB. And we only need one command for that, and that is uh, DD. Um, then we're going to say if equals, and after if equals, we're going to put the location of the ISO file. Now that stands, if is like input an input file or something like that. Um, so uh, where was that? That was in downloads and then Arch Linux. All right, so that's that's our input file. Now our output location, our output file is going to be SDB. Um, so how you write that, the actual location on Linux, excuse me, so OF uh, equals uh, slash dev slash SDB, and that's it. Um, so don't run this quite yet, um, but uh, just make absolutely sure that you are referring, you are looking at the SDB drive or whatever your USB drive, ha drive happens to be on your computer. Um, just if I were to accidentally type in SDA here, where SDA is the actual hard drive on my computer, this would wipe my entire drive. So that's why they call it disk destroyer. Be extra careful with it. So you want to have SDB or whatever it gave your USB drive. So make absolutely sure of this. I'm looking at this right now. So, right. So this is 7.5 gigs. That's probably my USB drive. All this is, you know, actually, I don't have a very big drive here, but whatever. Um, so anyway, once you do that, another thing you might want to throw in just because it's going to take a little time is status equals progress, where progress is in quotation marks. And this is just, um, if you just run it without this, it's going to, you know, transfer all the files, but it's not going to give you any feedback. But if you say status equals progress, it's going to show you as it loads, how fast it's loading, how much more it has to go, et cetera, et cetera. So now I am absolutely sure this is going to work. So I am going to run this, press enter. And as you see, it's going to be copying it over. So this is going to take uh, a little bit of time, uh, probably a couple minutes. So I'm going to stop the video here and come back uh, once that's done. And then we'll go into booting off the USB drive and actually installing uh, Arch Linux. Okie dokie, so we're back. Um, so mine took, it looks like only a little over three minutes. Um, uh, but anyway, so once you have done that, you can actually take your USB drive out. Well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to type in LSBLK again. Um, and you'll see that, it, well, we have our SDB still here. It has some partitions on it, uh, which are actually the same thing, same partitions I had before because I actually just had Arch Linux on this before. I just wanted to rewrite write it for illustrative purposes. Um, but anyway, what, once that's done, I'm going to take this thing out. You don't have to take it out, but I'll just go ahead and say, um, so let's be clear about what we just did, okay? Um, the ISO file that you downloaded, that is a little Arch Linux installation that is going to be on this USB drive. So what you're going to be doing, just in case, you know, you're not really clear with the concept, is we are going to now re uh, reboot our computer and basically get into this installation. We're going to be running the operating system that's on the USB drive. That's the thing that we're going to be doing next. Um, or at least that you're going to be doing next. So I'll go ahead and say that I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently uh, because I want to record comfortably on this nice uh, uh, desktop I actually have here. So I'm going to be installing Arch Linux from this installation I already have, which is a little weird, uh, but it's going to be exactly the same as what you're doing, I'll just say. So what you're going to want to do uh, next is plug plug in your USB, um, and you're going to want to reboot your computer. Now, 
every computer out there, sometimes they're a little different, but every computer has a way of choosing what you boot off of. And usually it consists in typing, well, you know, as your computer starts booting up at the very beginning, typing in F2 or F10 or F12 or something. I usually just mash them all because one of them works. I, I can't be bothered, you know, uh, because they're all different on different computers sometimes. Um, but yeah, so once you do that, you will get a boot menu where you can select what to boot off of. And you want to boot off of your USB drive, which if it's plugged in, it will detect. So once you manage to do that, it will start up an Arch Linux installation and you will basically be in a nice blank screen with a command prompt. And that's what we're going to end up at. So that's what you're going to do. I'll go ahead and tell you what I'm going to do. Um, so in case you don't know, Arch Linux in the repository, uh, actually, or I think it's the uh, what Arch Linux uh, scripts, something like that. Yeah, Arch. So Arch Linux has these Arch install scripts, uh, which if you don't know, it's basically uh, it just installs all of the files you need to install. Uh, install Arch Linux on your Arch Linux computer. If, so if you want to do what I'm going to do and install an operating system on another hard drive while you're in Arch, you can use this. But that this isn't important for you. Um, I'll just say what I'm going to be doing is I have a an extra hard drive here with a nice USB to SATA um, connector, and I'm going to be connecting this to my own computer. So uh, let me show you how it's going to work for me. Um, so I'll go ahead and say when you boot up on your computer, you are going the first command you're going to want to run is probably lsblk, right? So I'm going to run it. I'll go ahead and run it on mine. Here I have the same hard drive, dev sda. This is the hard drive my operating system is on, and you are going to have the hard drive on your computer uh, and the USB drive. Now I'm plugging in this nice little uh, portable uh, hard drive. And if I type in lsblk, now you will see that this is the hard drive in my computer. And this hard drive here is the one I want to install Arch Linux on. So the one that you want to install Arch Linux on is, you know, the hard drive in your actual computer. It may be dev SDA, uh, SDA or SDB, et cetera, et cetera. It can be different things. So just be mindful of it. Look at the drive size. Uh, just make sure you know which one you're going to be looking at. Um, but uh, I'm going to be working on dev SDB. Usually, uh, if you're booting off a USB, you're probably going to be working with dev SDA. Uh, that's the um, uh, usually what your main hard drive gets. Okay, so let's actually get the show on the road. How are we actually going to go about installing Arch Linux? Um, so once you have booted up into your USB drive, and once you know which drive you want to install Arch Linux on, uh, you will be all ready. So uh, you're going to have a nice little command prompt with nothing there, uh, which is going to be even more minimalist than what I have right here. Um, now the first thing you're going to want to do is check to see if you have to have a UEFI system. Um, now I am going to be, so if you don't know what these words mean, just ignore this part um, and I'll tell you what to do. But if you are using a system that requires UEFI, um, I'm not going to, I'm going to be installing Arch Linux for a traditional BIOS. So this is not going to be compatible with a computer that uses UEFI and requires it. Uh, if you have the choice, I always recommend use a traditional BIOS. There are different reasons for that. UEFI can just be a pain. I know there are some advantages. Someone's going to bother me about this, but I always recommend traditional BIOSes. Um, now, to check to see if you need UEFI, you want to type in ls sys firmware uh, EFI, and then I think it's FE, FE vars, something like that. Um, now, if I type this in, nothing's happening here. Like, there's there's no folder directory here. Um, that's because this computer here uses a traditional BIOS and nothing else. Now, if you type this command in and you get a bunch of results, like a whole bunch of files show up, um, you might have a computer that requires UEFI. Now, if you do, um, I'm going to put a link in the description for another install video where they show you how to 
you know, install it on a UEFI device. Um, but the only thing that's going to be different for you in this installation process is how you partition drives and when you install a bootloader. Uh, the rest of this is going to be exactly the same. Um, so if, if you type this in and you got the same error I got or nothing was there, you're probably, you're, you can follow exactly what's in this video and not have to worry about it. Uh, but just know, just know that that's out there. Okay. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead. The first thing you're going to, want to do is ping a website. So I'm going to ping uh, my website, my homepage, and I'm going to, it looks like I'm getting results. So I'm getting data back. I'm going to control C to stop that. Um, so you want to make sure that you have an internet connection. You can just check it with ping. Uh, again, as I said, you probably are going to want to have a um, an Ethernet cord. If you don't, you can run the command Wi-Fi menu, um, and Wi-Fi menu will actually search all the different uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi networks, and you can choose one and put in a password for one. But I always recommend just use Ethernet. It's way easier. You don't have you shouldn't have to set anything up if you have Ethernet. Um, okay, so. Uh, I'll also go ahead and say another thing you want to do is uh, time date CTL and we basically want to uh, make sure that our, our clock is all good uh, so just run that and that's just the detail you don't have to uh, but anyway let's go ahead and get into this so the first thing we're going to do is want, we want to partition our drive so if I'm going to LSBLK again and the drive that I want to install on is dev SDB so each drive can have different partitions. There are separate sections uh, where you can basically keep, uh, f you know, different files. They're different uh, sort of, the, well, I'll put it this way. The reason you want to have partitions uh, is because let's say that I install Arch Linux and something goes wrong, terribly wrong with my system. Um, and like, you know, the drive messes up in a part like totally malfunctions in the root directory or something like that. And if that happens, a lot of times if you just have one drive, that's a lot more problematic if you want to reinstall something or reformat it or fix it. It's always nice to have partitions to divide your system into different partitions and put them, you know, basically it's sort of like having your eggs in different baskets. Um, now there are other reasons as well. I'll just say it's good form to always have different partitions. So the first thing we're going to do is take our drive and cut it into a couple partitions for all the important things we need in Arch Linux. So we can use the, uh, the command fdisk for that. So just run fdisk dev sdb um, and just type that in. Now you are in a new command prompt. Um, now, as it says, you can type in m for help and it gives you some of the different commands that you can actually run. Uh, so if we type in p, that is gonna print out everything that's in our drive right now. All right, so here's our drive. It just has one big, so um, S, so we're in dev sdb. Uh, it only has one partition called dev sdb1. Uh, now the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to delete that partition. Just type in D and it's going to say it's been deleted. If you have multiple partitions, you'll have to press D a couple times uh, for each partition. Um, now we're going to want to put, well, actually I'll type in P again. Now we just have, we have no partitions. Um, so now I'll go ahead uh, to create new partitions. You're going to want to press in. Uh, I'm going to say uh, the default uh, for primary partition. Uh, then you can give it a number. I'm just going to give it one. Uh, first sector, just again, press enter. You, did, you don't have to worry about that. And then last sector. Let me remove this for a second. Um, so this is basically asking for how big you want this partition to be. So this first partition we're going to make, this is going to be our boot partition. This is going to be where all the, the grub menu and all the important stuff we need for installing. This is where we're going to put that. Um, now I usually make mine uh, 200 megs. So I'm going to put in plus 200 MB, or excuse me, it's just M in this program. Um, and if I run that, um, it's going to, sometimes it'll ask you, if you had a previous partition there, it's going to ask you to remove the signature. If so, just say yes. Um, and then that'll be done. You can press P again and it will print out. You will now see that you have this uh, new partition. It starts at this, you know, the it's start and end values are here. This is basically the size. Um, well, here's the 
you know, size and readable format. But um, so that is now our boot partition. Um, so I'm going to do the typical format where you have uh, usually what you use for Arch Linux is a boot partition, a swap partition, a root partition and a home partition. And I'll explain those as we go on. So we have our boot partition. I'm going to type in again uh, and then I'll go with P for the default, go with two for the default, first sector, just press enter. And this is going to be our swap, uh, 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 excuse me, our swap partition. Um, so this is for when you hi hibernate your computer or different things like that. Um, there are a bunch of different recommendations about the kind of size you should have for this thing. Um, I'm just going to say, I think the typical rule of thumb is 150% of your RAM size. So if you have like 8 gigs of RAM, you should have a swap space of 12 gigs or something like that. Um, so that's the size I'm going to go with because I don't have 8 gigs of RAM on this device, but it has a potential to have uh, 8 gigs or whatever. So I'm just going to type in plus 12 G for 12 gigs. Uh, so I'm going to run that. And now if we print our partition table out once again, we will see we now have SDB1 and SDB2. Okay, so two more to go. Now you know how to do it though. So uh, I'm going to type in in again for new, default value, default value, first sector, default value. Now this third partition, this is going to be the root partition. Uh, that is root isn't just the slash. Um, so this is going to be where all your programs are going to be. And it's safe to have, you know, some Linux distributions get away with having less than 10 gigabytes for this. I think that's really pushing it. Um, I would say a safe, uh, a consistently safe uh, size is probably 25 gigs. Uh, you could probably do more, probably do less. Uh, depends on how much stuff you actually want on your uh, partition, but I would definitely say at least 15 gigs uh, if you're having a normal computer. If you're the kind of person who installs lots and lots of stuff and you just sort of keep it on your computer, uh, you should probably have more than 25 gigs or so. Uh, I'm going to put plus 25 gigs. Uh, that's going to be enough. Um, and uh, it's asking me to uh, wipe the signature, just say yes. Uh, it may or may not ask for that again. Um, and last but not least, we're going to have the home partition. And the home partition is going to take all up the rest of the, all the rest of the space. That's going to be where you have all your files. That's going to be where you store all your stuff. This is the most, well, it's not the most important partition. Root is probably the most per important partition, but home is the most important one to have lots of good space on. Uh, so this is where you put all the rest of your space. Uh, again, new for new partition, P for primary, uh, first sector, just press enter. Um, and for last sector, if you just leave it empty and press enter, it's going to fill it up with all the rest of the space. Um, so now I'm just going to, again, press Y for yes. And if we print that out again, uh, here we go. We see uh, we have four nice partitions. This is perfect for a good Arch Linux installation. This is the hard part, don't worry. Um, and it also gives us little warnings just that, uh, you know, these... Uh, all these uh, uh, previous partitions, previous, you know, uh, are, they're going to be wiped or whatever. Um, so that's that. All right. So once you're done with all this, you have everything, uh, you want to type in W. And W means write. That means it hasn't actually changed anything on your partition. But once you type in W, it's going to write all those changes to, and your hard drive will be reformatted. So I haven't said it explicitly, but in case you don't know, um, this is going to wipe everything you have on the computer you're dealing with. Um, so, which means back everything up. I, this might be a, a bad time to tell you that, but yeah, you are going to be wiping over everything else. Um, now, I will say, uh, I mentioned, uh, you know, partitioning. One of the reasons that uh, you want to partition your device, you want to have a separate root and home and stuff like that, is... Um, let's say that you don't like something goes terribly wrong with your Arch Linux installation or you, uh, I mean, you know, it's not, Arch Linux doesn't actually break all the time. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, let's say you try something really innovative and you totally mess up your, your, uh, some, your user directory or something like that. Um, and if you have different partitions, it's very easily to totally wipe your root partition and go in. Uh, and just install a new system and not have to move your home partition or whatever. All of that stays exactly where it is. Um, but that's one of the reasons you want to partition. Anyway, uh, long digression there. 
Um, so yeah, just press W and it will overwrite all of your hard drive and that's it. And it takes you back to the typical uh, command prompt, the typical bash command prompt. Or, um, so I'm going to type in lsblk once again. Um, so again, on my computer, um, SDA, this is the actual hard drive, the, the hard drive in my computer, not the one that I'm installing Arch on. Uh, SDB is the one that I am going to be installing Arch on. Um, and you see now that it has all these nice partitions, uh, 200 megs, um, yeah, uh, got our swap partition, our root partition, yada, yada, yada. We got lots of good stuff. Okay, so um, the next thing we're going to want to do is actually mount everything. Uh, so how do we, well, actually, no, we should make file systems. Duh, you got to make file systems. That's super important. So right now we have our drive partitioned. Uh, but we have to tell, we basically have to set up file systems on all the ones we need to have file systems. Um, so the typical file system for Linux is uh, ext4. You don't need to know anything about it. You don't need to know anything about file systems. Um, we're just going to do them. Um, so to make file systems, what you want to do is, well, actually, lsblk again. So the ones that we want to make into real file systems are the boot partition, which is number one, the root partition, and the home partition. These are the partitions that are going to be having files. Now the swap partition, this is not going to have a typical file system. So we're not going to you know, be doing anything. We're not going to be making a, a file system on that. So anyway, to make a file system, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, just type in mkfs.ext4. That's just the, the command. And then you put in the uh, partition. So slash dev slash sdb1. This is going to be our boot partition. We'll do that. It took just a second. Then we're going to put in three uh, for the root partition. I'm uh, going to run that. Take a little longer because it's a little bigger. OK. Um, and now the home partition. Hopefully it doesn't take so long that I actually have to stop the video. But uh, oh yeah, I guess we have a really small hard drive here. Or how big is this? OK, 320 gigs. That might be a little bit of time. All right. Um, I'll be back in a second. Okay, that didn't take quite as long as I thought it was going to take. Um, all right, so anyway, uh, now if we lsblk once again, um, actually, did I remember to start recording again? Give me a second. Okay, yeah, it is. Okay, anyway, um, so now we have all our different partitions, uh, and they all have file systems on them. The last thing we want to do is set up the swap partition. So remember, dev sdb2, that is going to be our swap partition. Now to do that, all you have to do is say mk swap dev sdb2. Uh, so now it is a swap partition, and you want to say swap swap on dev sdb2. Actually, I don't know if you actually have to put the drive on there, but either way. So that's all you have to do to set up the swap. Okay, so now we have basically, we've now prepared the canvas on which we are going to write Arch Linux. The last part is just putting the canvas up. Um, so now what we want to do is actually take those partitions and put them into the, mount them on the file system so we can actually modify them. Um, so just to be clear, uh, just because you plug a drive in in Linux does not mean, or any other operating system for that matter, does not mean that it's actually uh, being able to be modified at the time being, uh, so to speak. So if you see right here, we have mount points. So again, this is my main drive here, and you'll see that everything here, so this is my map to home, this is map to root, this is the swap, this is the boot, etc. These are all mounted to particular places. Um, now, in order to modify these drives, we have to mount them to a particular place as well, as well. And then we'll be able to install Arch Linux on it, which is really easy. The actual installation is just like one command and then a little bit of configuring, but we're, we're about there. Um, so first, so our, the first thing you want to mount is, of course, the root uh, uh, partition. So I'm going to mount dev sdb3. And I'm going to mount it, the traditional place to mount it is slash mnt. Um, you could mount it anywhere you want, but slash mnt, it's just tradition. Um, so let's put it, so now that we have, let me ls mnt, and you'll see that uh, this 
nice little folder lost and found is there. That's just part of the, you know, part of the partition. Uh, I think it's metadata or something. I'm not really quite sure. Now, um, so now we have mounted lsblk. We have mounted our root partition to the uh, slash mnt on our main uh, computer. Um, so now we're going to want to make folders to mount the other drive. So I'm going to make a directory, mkdir, slash mount slash home. Um, and that now if I show what's in mnt again, uh, you'll see that we now have, excuse me, you'll see that we now have a home folder. Um, and I'm also going to make a directory boot. Okay. Uh, and you'll see, great, now we have a directory boot and we have a directory home. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the boot and the home partitions to these folders. So I'm going to say mount dev sdb1, which is our boot partition, mount that onto mount slash boot. Okay, that looks good. So then we're going to map sdb4 to mnt slash home. And that's that. Great. So now that that's done, we'll, we'll, we'll do one last LSBLK. It's probably like the 50th uh, we've done. Um, but we'll now see that our file systems are all where they should be, right? So um, they're all in the MNT uh, area. Okay. So now we're getting to, getting to the part where we actually install Arch Linux. In fact, you're really just one command away from having an Arch Linux installation. You have to set up the bootloader too, but technically only one. Um, and that is, there's this magical, I'm going to type in man packstrap, oh, there is no man uh, manual for it, but who cares? Uh, well, you can probably do packstrap. Okay, yeah. So, there's this magical command called packstrap um, on Arch Linux, uh, on your Arch Linux USB. And this is going to basically install an Arch Linux, install Arch Linux uh, wherever you tell it to. Um, so we're going to tell it to install on MNT. We're going to say treat that as our new Arch Linux install. And what we want to tell it to, um, basically we want to get say install the base packages, but we can also give it other things to install. So I like to always install base devel um, because this uh, package set installs, or it's really a group I think, installs things like sudo and stuff like that and some development tools for compiling programs that you'll probably end up needing. But you can also go ahead and say, what other programs do I want on my computer? Let's say I want Vim. I'm going to want Vim because immediately once I get into it, uh, I, I want to use, I want to end up using Vim and it annoys me if it's not there. So you can go ahead and say all the programs you want to install. Um, but once you do that, just press enter and it is going to synchronize the database, the Arch Linux database. And it's literally just going to download and install an entire Arch Linux system right on the MNT drive uh, or the MNT mount point. Uh, so you're going to now have Arch Linux on this drive. Now, um, as it's starting to load, this is going to take a while. So I'm going to uh, have to cut the video off for a second. Um, but once we do this, we'll have the entire Arch Linux on the system, but we're not totally done. Uh, we want to install a bootloader, so Grub or whatever um, knows how, your computer knows how to actually load Arch Linux. We're going to want to make an FS tab, I'll explain what that is in a second. And we're also going to want to set up things like, you know, your, your uh, internet access and stuff like that. Um, and the objective is once you're able to boot into Arch Linux, you have all the basic tools you need to configure whatever you want. Uh, just as long as you are totally, you don't have to rely on the USB anymore. That's the thing we're, we're looking at, but uh, we're almost there. So I'm going to cut this video off and uh, I'll see you in a couple minutes. Well, it's a couple seconds in your time, but a couple minutes uh, on my side. All right, so once that's done, we have a couple options of what exactly we can configure next. There are a couple other things we need to do before we can successfully boot into the system. Um, so first, I'm going to uh, go ahead and make an FS tab file. So what exactly is an FS tab file? Um, so let's put it this way. We have all these different partitions. One of them is our root partition. It has all the, you know, all our programs on it. We also have the boot and the home partition. And we, of course, mounted those a little bit ago manually. We manually said, mount the root partition here, mount the home partition here, boot partition there, et cetera, et cetera. Now, of course, when we're booting up an actual machine, you never have to tell Linux to do that. That's something that happens automatically. Um, how does that happen, you might ask? Well, it happens with an FS tab file. 
Uh, let me go ahead and say, let me pull up, pull up another terminal. Let me show you the FS tab on my computer here. Now, if you open up uh, Etsy.fs tab, um, this is basically a little file that just lists out all the different drives that Linux is going to try to load. So here we have our root, here we have our boot, our home, and this down here is our swap. Um, so we want to generate one of these files. Now, of course, you could go find the UUIDs and manually write them out, but screw that. There's, a, there's one command you can do to just automatically generate them. Um, now, keep in mind, we've just installed the system. We haven't even uh, ch uh, changed root into the actual system. Uh, we're still in our USB drive. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I have this uh, command genfs tab. I'm just going to run it. It shows you the kind of options you have. Now, if you run genfs tab, um, and then I, if I say mn, slash mnt, what it's going to do is it's going to look at that mnt directory. And that, of course, is where we mounted all of our different drives. And it's going to say, OK, based on that, I'm going to take all the different things that are mounted here and I'm going to return them. So that's what it's done here. Um, now, there are two things. So notice what it's outputted. Um, so notice there are two things that are, I guess, wrong here or things we should change. First off, since I have, this isn't going to be a problem if you boot it off your USB drive, but since I'm on another computer with another swap drive, I actually have two swap drives here because both of these are on. So SDA1, this is the one on my computer now, and SDB2, uh, yeah, so this is the one that well, I made a couple minutes ago, right? Uh, so I'm going to want to remove that, but we'll do that later. Um, the other thing is, um, right now, it's looking at these drives. It's looking at their address in, you know, if they're dev SDB, dev SDA, whatever, whatever. And the thing about those kind of, you know, locations in the Linux file system is that sometimes they can change depending on what drives you have in your computer. So it's better to use UUIDs. Uh, now, these are commented out. But if we run genfs tab, uh, capital U as an option, that's going to uh, use UUIDs by default. And that's really what we want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this file or take this uh, command and we're going to output it to slash mnt slash etsy slash um, fs tab. Okay. Um, so if, you know, just in case you don't know outputting and stuff like that, all we're doing is taking what that command would puke out and puking that into a file. So once we've done that, we can actually open up that file again, mnt etsy fs tab, um, and we will see that all of this stuff that was outputted by that command is now here. Now I'm also, since as I said, I'm not going to need this here, I'm going to delete that entry. And the only ones left are the ones we actually want for our, um, uh, our, our actual Arch Linux system. So now when you try and boot, uh, when you try and boot Arch Linux with all these partitions, it's going to know what to put where or whatever, you know, it, kn it knows where everything's go everything goes. Great. So now that's done. Now what we're going to want to do is jump into our actual Arch Linux system we just installed, and we're going to finalize the installation by making it bootable so you can actually uh, boot into it uh, without a problem. So the command you're going to want to run is arch true root, uh, change root, and then slash mnt. Now, when you do this, what this is going to do, actually, I'll just run it. Um, now, it doesn't look like anything changed, but actually something very big happened. Um, that is, before that, you were in your USB drive running the commands from your USB drive, and that's, that's all. That's all you were doing. Now, you are actually inside of your new Arch Linux installation. If I type ls, um, I'm actually in the root directory. It's going to show all the files I have there, etc. Um, and or if we now put so notice the um, Etsy dot uh, or excuse me the FS tab that we just generated is not going to be is now going to be in our et actual Etsy file or uh, directory rather than mount dot Etsy slash Etsy. Um, okay, so anyway, so now we are now in your actual Arch Linux installation. So one thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and install uh, a network manager. Um, and that's because by default, 
Arch Linux is not going to detect whatever Ethernet you have, Ethernet port or whatever you happen to have. Um, now there are different choices for network managers, uh, but I like a uh, network manager, which is my preferred network manager. And yeah, that's the name. Uh, so if you just type in Pacman S Network Manager, that will install Network Manager. Um, so in case you've never used Arch Linux or Manjaro or any other Arch Linux based distribution before, uh, Pacman with the capital S option, that means install a package. So I'm going to run that. It's only going to take a second, uh, but I'm going to, it's just going to install the whole thing. So by default, of course, again, if I just rebooted into my computer, I wouldn't have internet access. I'd have to manually put that on. So I'm going to install Arch Linux, or excuse me, install network manager, install a network manager, um, and then activate it. Uh, and hopefully it doesn't take too much. Okay. I'll guess I'll have. Okay, so once you have Network Manager installed, uh, you're going to want to tell Systemd to automatically start it uh, on startup. Um, so to do that, you just type in systemctl, enable, and then Network Manager, and the N, -M -N and M are capitalized. So if you run that, it's going to create a bunch of sim links that basically will tell Arch to automatically start Network Manager whenever you log in. Um, so now you'll have your Ethernet's going to work by default and stuff like that. And of course you can throw in Wi-Fi stuff as well. Uh, I'll talk more about the kind of stuff you can do for that in the video where I talk about configuring Arch, but for right now this will be enough. Okay, so create a network manager. Um, another thing we're going to want to install is of course uh, Grub or another bootloader. So I'm going to install Grub. Um, now, Grub, of course, is the nice little menu that comes up when you first load uh, a Linux installation or, you know, other stuff uh, where you can choose the different operating systems you have. Now, you do, in fact, need it because Grub is the thing that, you know, goes about detecting all your different partitions and actually, you know, deciding which one's which. Um, so it is important to have. Uh, it looks like it's installing pretty quickly. Um, is it? Okay, yeah, so once once that's over, you're, we're gonna wanna generate our Grub configuration. So the first thing, let me go back to LSBLK again. Um, so again, we are, well, my machine is, the thing I'm running it on is SDB. You might be doing SDA or whatever, just be mindful of that. Um, so we're gonna, what we're gonna wanna do is first install Grub on that, and you do that with the Grub install command. And then you type in, I had to write this down, let me double check, because I always forget how to write this, but it's uh, slash slash, or, uh, or hyphen hyphen, target equals i386 hyphen pc, and then we'll put in dev sdb. Now you don't put dev sdb1, just dev sdb. Um, now run that and it's going to install Grub on your, oh, well, it's already done. Grub is now installed, but we also have to make the configuration file for it. And to do that, we do Grub make config and we're going to output that config to boot slash boot Grub and then Grub.cfg. Um, actually, I th gr this might add, automatically run when you do grub install, but uh, it's probably safer to anyway. So now we have a configuration file. Now we have grub. Uh, so I think right now, if you turned off your computer, it would actually boot up successfully. I'm not entirely sure. I think you need to set a locale, but we got most of the moving pieces in place. Okay. Okay. So now we just have to pick up all the pieces, uh, a couple other things that need to be done. Um, so we might as well set a password. Um, so, well, you're definitely going to want to set a password. So to do that, just type in P-A-S-S-W-D. Um, and since it's your first password, all it's going to do is prompt you to put something in. I'm just going to put, you know, something totally non-forgettable uh, and totally not secure. Um, but once you do that, you'll finally have a password on your device. So this is going to be the root password since you're running this as root. Um, so when you log in on your new system, you're going to use the username root and the password that you just put in. Um, so that's going to be it. Okay, so now you have the password. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to open up, I'm going to generate our locale. Um, so what you want to do is take Vim or Nano or whatever. Well, maybe we should do Nano. Well, now I'm going to use Vim because 
anyway, so uh, and open up locale.gen. So locale.gen is a huge list of all of the different, uh, you know, different locales you can choose from. There are going to be, you know, languages and countries. Uh, I am going to look for en underscore us because I want American English. And what you're going to want to do is just uncomment the two lines that are relevant to you. Um, now, once you do that, of course, you can choose multiple languages if you need them on your machine. Um, but once you do that, just save this file and exit it. And then you're going to want to run locale dot or no, yeah, locale hyphen gen. Yeah, okay, that's right. Um, and so what this command is going to do is read the file, read that file for lines that are uncommented, and create the locales for all of those. Okay, so now that we have our locale. Um, there are a couple other things that are sort of language or region specific that we might as well do. Um, so you are going to want to open up uh, Etsy slash locale with an e at the end dot conf. Actually, I think this this should be a new file, so it should there shouldn't already be something here. Um, and you gotta you should set your lang variable here. This is pretty important. I'm gonna put in so my languages is of course. English, American English. So I'm going to type in uh, enus.utf8 um, with UTF-8 encoding, uh, and I'm just going to save that. That's just to set your language and stuff like that. Um, you might have to look up. I mean, if you speak another language, uh, just look up which one you need, or you know, your country code or whatever, uh, and put it in there. Um, so set that as well. And the other thing you want to set is time zone, um, because I'm not, I'm pretty sure you may need to actually manually set it even if you live in what, what is it, like GMT or whatever. Um, but to do that, you want to, well, I'll go ahead and put it this way. So if you look in, uh, where is it? Uh, I think I wrote it down. This is a, another thing that I sort of have trouble remembering. Okay, so it's user share zone info. Now, if you look in there, that's where they keep all the time zone information for all the different countries, cities, whatevers. Um, so what we're going to want to do is link, uh, well, I should also say this. So t by default, um, there is, I don't think there, it's file, okay, yeah. So there's a file, Etsy, uh, slash local time. And what we want to do is we want to link that file to the proper time zone we want or whatever. So to do that, it's actually pretty simple. It's just one command. So link, um, so ln is for establishing links. You can make symbolic links and stuff like that. And we want to make one between user share zone info. And then you're going to pick which zone you want. You can, of course, tab select to have all these choices. So I am going to want America. And of all the possibilities here, I am going to want Phoenix because I'm on Phoenix time. Uh, you can pick New York or wherever you are. Um, so, and that is going to, as I said, Etsy dot, or excuse me, slash local time. And just run that. And that will basically tell your computer, I am in this time zone. So again, this is, a, of course, is a general thing. If you are using your system, I mean, let's say, I mean, something that happens to me a lot is when I go on a plane somewhere else, um, I got to reset my time zone. This command here is all you have to do. Uh, just reset it to whatever time zone you want. And that's all, that's all you have to worry about. So um, the last thing we're going to want to do is uh, I'm going to set a host name. And of course, this is going to be the name of your computer. So on this device, it happens to be tester because this is what it, this is the computer I test all the stuff on that I'm developing or whatever. Um, but we want to add a name for our computer. And to do that, you go into uh, Etsy, what is it, host name. Uh, and this should be a blank file. Again, you can name it whatever you want. Well, not whatever you want. It should be just one word or something like that. So I'm going to call this, I don't know, maybe I'll just call it Arch or Arch install or something like that. Um, and just save that. And that is going to be what your computer looks to. Th this file is what your computer is going to look to as for you know what it's going to call itself or whatever. Okay, so I think at this point we pretty much have we've hit all the spots. Um, so when you reboot your computer, well, I'll show you how to reboot and everything. So keep in mind we're still in the uh, on 
okay, so, well, you we have to remember we're in a very weird position. So we're on the computer, we are, we booted off the live device, and we went from the live device into the actual hard drive. So if we go here and type in exit, or now we're in the actual hard drive, but when we type, type exit, now we are back where we originally were in the USB drive. Um, so for safety sake, I guess we can unmount all those drives we mounted. So if you type in U mount, not unmount, U mount, um, and then capital R, and then uh, MNT slash MNT, that will, the R is for recursive, that removes what's on slash MNT and everything else. So if we type in LSBLK again, you'll see that nothing here is, uh, you know, mounted. Um, so after that, you can pretty much type reboot and uh, will remove, once your computer finishes shutting down or whatever, you can remove your USB drive and it should boot off of your new Arch Linux install. So I'm gonna try it on my device and I'll uh, show you. Okay, so hopefully uh, you rebooted your computer and everything worked out fine. I'll go ahead and show you that mine worked. So if I pull up, I actually took a, a picture of it since I can't really show you it. Um, but, you know, you just log in as root and password, whatever the password you gave it, and you should see your nice little host name here. Um, you should be able to ping stuff. You should have network access since we installed an enabled network manager. So this is all you need to jump to wherever you want, whatever kind of configuration you want. You now have a system, a bare bone system to really start installing stuff or doing whatever you want. So. Um, now you have installed Arch Linux, you now have a machine running Arch Linux. Um, now you have two, I, I'm gonna put up a, a couple videos in the future. Now one of them, as I mentioned before, is what exactly do you do once you get to this point? How do you install a desktop environment? I'm gonna put up a video on that pretty soon. I'm also gonna put up a video on how to manage an Arch Linux system, how to update it, what kind of things you need to check out for and stuff like that. So I'm gonna put up that, put those things up in a little bit. I will say I would be wasting my time if I didn't make a shameless plug, but just because it's there. That is, if you don't want to go through configuring and putting up all your own stuff into Arch Linux and you know figuring out how to do a desktop manager. Uh, as you may know, if you're my subscriber, I have a um, configuration script that you can easily run on any fresh install of Arch Linux, which you conveniently now have. Um, that is, as long as you have, of course, this is larbs, larbs.xyz is the website. Um, all you have to do is literally just run these two commands and it will bring up a prompt that will guide you through the installation and it installs basically the setup I have here, uh, all the bells and whistles that I use uh, that you see on my channel. Um, so check that out if you want. Otherwise, I'll be putting up uh, videos on Arch Linux, uh, how to configure things, as I said, in the future. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, so hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.